Hi everyone, this is Nipun Kathuria. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Smile Genius Dental. In this podcast, you will hear about the digital tools that can help you launch and manage your clear lineup businesses easily. Orthomarketing.com, 360 degree digital marketing solutions for your practice. Well, hello everybody out there in podcast land. This is Dean Steinman from Ortho Marketing, and we are back with another podcast for you. And I'm um, very excited for our guest today. Um, you know, we're always f- trying to find great um, people to join us, people who are um, influencers, disruptors, and game changers. And there's a great program out there that I want to introduce you guys to. Um, great, great guy who is very hands-on, very smart, and um, it's exciting. I'm very excited to have him jo- join us here. So. I have Nipun Katuria here, who is the CEO and co-founder of Smile Genius, and very excited to have him here to talk a little bit about um, the industry, some trends, and um, help you guys become a lot more educated. So, boom, welcome. How are you today? Thanks, Dean. Thanks for uh, bringing me to this, uh, to your to your podcast. Yeah, great. Uh, I'm good, and good. Uh, good evening from Dublin. So it's 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 nice uh, uh, to have you there. I've been listening to a lot of your podcasts, so really excited to be here. Great. Well, I appreciate you joining. So we're going to jump into it. So quick, tell us who you are. Tell us your story and um, your know, background and how you um, came up with the idea here as, uh, for Smile Genius. Sure. Yeah. So uh, I'm one of the co-founders and the CEO uh, of Smile Genius. Uh, so my background has been software engineering and I did my MBA at Trinity College in Dublin. That brought me to Ireland. Uh, so again, I'm not a dentist by any profession. My wife is a dentist, so that's why I, how I was introduced to the the side of dentistry. So my kind of background had been more on the commercial side of the business side of things. I understood marketing, I understood business finance. So uh, she had been working in a lot of orthodontic practices, uh, you know, in in Carolinas uh, within Europe, and uh, I was introduced through her uh, to our co-founder, who is Dr. Mark Anthony Shepard. And uh, Smile Genius was his idea. So having worked in a lot of uh, Alina brands in Europe, uh, being the lead dentist, or, you know, he realized that there were a lot of gaps in the industry when it comes to digitization. And every business, uh, be it from the best ones in the world to the startups of the world, they are reinventing the wheel when it comes to technology, the digital side of things. And we realized that you know it's better to come up with a product that can solve that problem for these new businesses, the DSOs, the clinics, and that's how Smile Genius was born. So it was built to help him in his clinic, which is Dr. Mark's clinic. And now we are kind of rolling it out for all the global you know, partners that we work with, the clients that we're working with. But yeah, it started with helping him in his clinic with something that we built as a small Smile Genius application. And what was your aha moment when putting this together? Because you know, I love you know interviewing you know well, entrepreneurs and figure out you know what made them start it, how they, they came to it. So what did you see was missing? And and what was your aha moment to say, wow, I'm, I got to figure out a solution to this. So what was the main thing that, that hit you over the head and saying, wow, there's a big hole here. I got to fill I got to fill it. Yeah. So there, there are two things, right? So when it, when it comes to healthcare in general or health tech, and especially in dental side of things, uh, like our industry has been laggard in terms of adopting the technology and the digital advancements, right? That was number one. When we look at, uh, you know, so my experience had been retail and finance and tech. And I've seen that if you look at how retail and finance, they have just kind of leapfrogged all other industries when it comes to systems, CRM, single view of customers and other things. And when it comes to dental, you know, everyone was still like people did not have even a proper website, you know, just starting with that. They did not have any social media accounts. So just those were the simple things that kind of uh, brought that aha moment that, you know, the industry was lagging behind other industries. And then within healthcare as well, like the general healthcare was so much advanced relatively to dental as well. So dental was falling behind. And when, uh, like I was, you know, when we were, I was talking to my wife or we were talking to, you know, uh, with my co-founder uh, at that time, he was just a friend. We were just talking about how we can bring those learnings from retail, from, you know, let's say high street, from finance into dentistry as well. And, you know, in, in if you look at salespeople in in retail in general, like everyone calls a single view of customer. They have everything tied together in terms of you know the customer's journey through different touch points. But when it comes to dentistry and clear liners, 
we were still scrambling along, you know, six to eight different platforms, copying, pasting from Excel sheets, using WhatsApp, using Zoom or Skype at that time. So there was, it was still scattered. And, you know, that was kind of leaving a lot of opportunities on the table, you know, which no one was leveraging when it comes to dentists, labs and, you know, patients alike. So I, I think that it was a missing opportunity in that sense. Uh, but then especially within aligners, you know, when it comes to the direct-to-consumer companies, they leverage technology like anything, but they had their own disadvantages as well. And right. then when it came to the physical, you know, stores and physical clinics, uh, they were very much behind. So we kind of brought a system that was, that brought the efficiencies of a really enterprise level company to the smaller clinics, to the DSOs, and to all the aligner systems, aligner companies that are out there in the world. So there's a lot of components when it comes to al aligners and, and a practice. So, you know, to put them together in one hub, per se, it must have been a pretty daunting challenge. So, how do, you know, what steps did you do in order to, to figure out how to put all these pieces together? You know, because it's a big puzzle out there, you know, and we can say, you know, digitizing and uh, getting out of the analog world, you know, that's what is trending now. Every time, you know, the last several, um, you know, conference I've been to, the last one of the AO, it was, it was all about, you know, get taking your practice to the, to the next, to the next step and adapting the technology. So, you know, what would you say are the, are the main components that needed to be put together? Because, you know, let's, people who can listen to this are probably, dentists with orthodontists and they're having, you know, they use aligners, you've got several different technologies that might be autonomous. They, some might work together, some might not. So it might be, it's frustrating to have to use a cut and paste to this and then work onto this and then go to Zoom for this. So, you know, um, how did you, how'd you tackle this? Because by, by working with outside sources, some of them might not work together. So how did you overcome that and figure that out and to make MyoGenius work the way it is? Yeah, so, so that's a very, very good question. And I think it's, it's, it's a complex world out there. And I think you rightly said that it's so much of, there's so much of noise out there. There's so many platforms out there. And then we're talking about patients' data, right? So it's kind of spread across different systems, which is not compliant in a way as well, right? So it's, it's all over the place. So, so what we do in Smile Genius is that we kind of capture the different touch points uh, or we understood different after talking to so many dentists, you know, what were the different tools and systems they were using and for what purposes. And if you start from the patient's journey, right, when the patient walks in, books an appointment, walks into a clinic, you know, they give scans or preliminary images, uh, you know, uh, through, you know, to, to the dentist or they might be sharing something remotely before they walk into the clinic. Uh, the patient, you know, the dentist capturing the prescription, you know, the order form, sending the prescription to the lab. So there's so many stakeholders involved. And, you know, if it was a typical, you know, a dentist serving a patient through a service model extraction or cleaning, you don't need too many stakeholders. But because we're talking about orthodontics, we're talking about aligners, there's a whole supply chain out there. And uh, what we did was that we, we understood those touch points and what were the three different stakeholders. So in this case, there are three stakeholders. One is your the patient, you have the dentist, and then you have the laboratory or the manufacturer of the aligners. And we connected those three in a seamless single system so that any stakeholder, be it the lab, be it the dentist, or be it the patient, they just have to log in to one single portal, especially the dentist, because they're scrambling through a lab portal, which is a case management. They might be using a remote monitoring app, which is not talking to their case management. Uh, then they might be using Zoom to do video consultations. They're using a different calendar system, their own practice management system. So there were still so many you know, tools out there and which we kind of integrated into a single solution. And again, we started uh, with obviously a simple solution. And then after talking to a lot of businesses out there in terms of what their needs were, and a lot of these things we did not even realize. For example, invoicing wasn't a big thing for us. And we were focusing so much on patient monitoring and the data and, you know, the, all the other things. But then we realized that invoicing is such a big headache for the, the manufacturers, the labs, and the dentists. If you give an example, right, my wife is a dentist. She doesn't get a full clarity of the breakdown of the invoices, what her practice is, you know, being charged by the, by the lab. She only gets an invoice at the end of the month or, sorry, a paycheck at the end of the month for the patients that she has, you know, seen. There's a lack of clarity when it comes to sales invoicing. So again, just giving an example. So we are learning every day. It's a complex world. We haven't, you know, done every integration in, in the world out there, but we are learning and we are adapting and we are increasing our scope and trying to make it uh, integrated end-to-end. -end. And that's what we, we like to call it, an end-to-end -end solution for clear line of businesses. 
This podcast is sponsored by orthomarketing.com. Hey, you an orthodontist, a dentist, looking to give your practice the competitive edge it deserves? Well, look no further than orthomarketing. Orthomarketing is the dentist orthodontist choice for digital marketing. Wealth of Marketing, we specialize in helping orthodontists and dentists just like you attract more new patients. Our team of experts knows the ins and outs of the dental and orthodontic industry, and we're here to help your practice shine. We're going to supercharge your online presence. We're going to optimize your website. We're going to harness the power of social media to connect you with the patients that you want. Say goodbye to empty chairs and say hello to a thriving practice. Choose Wealth of Marketing today and watch your patient list grow. Visit orthomarketing.com and learn more and take the first steps towards your practice success. Ortho Marketing, it's not just our name, it's what we do. How are you helping a practice adapt and change? I've, I've mentioned this I, probably 90% of my podcast that change is the scariest thing that a business owner has to do, has to deal with change. Nobody likes change. Nobody likes the unknown. And it's scary. And to have to work with a whole new platform, a whole new technology, because and, and, they're used to working with one they have, you know, their, their POS they have now, how do you help them overcome this initial objection or fear of change? Because with every software or practice or company that, that I've interviewed or work, worked with, they don't all work together, you know, and, and if somebody doesn't want to have to work on seven different softwares. So how do you help practice, you know, understand or a doctor who who's doing this for a while, what advice would you give them as far as how to adapt? Because they have to, if you don't, you know, if you, you know, I've used this term a lot, adapt or die. If you don't adapt, you're, 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 you know, your business is dead in any business. If you're an electrician, if you're a plumber, if you're a dentist, you're a restaurant, you have to adapt. Um, so what, what bit of advice uh, are you, would you give a dentist who knows they have to adapt and change, but are reluctant or scared? Yeah. So uh, I think th that's a very valid question. And I think it's applicable to any industry, not just dentistry. And I think th things are changing so fast. And if you look at speci specifically, I think you mentioned about everyone is talking about digital uh, yeah, strategy, like be it any Invisalign, be it Clear Correct, be it anyone. Everyone is talking about the digital pillar within their strategy that is the next enabler for them for their growth. So it's kind of either you adapt or die because everyone around you is changing. Uh, we do see again it's a human behavior. Some people like to change. Some people are you know happy to learn new skills and adapt and leverage that within their own practice and grow. So it depends. I, I would say that not everyone uh, you know it, it's more of a uh, you know people who want to kind of learn fast, grow. I think they are usually the early adopters. But then we, we kind of we made the system very simple. Uh, if you look at our user interface, uh, we have spent so much of time on the design side of things. So if you can use Facebook, you can use Smile Genius, right? So it's as simple as that. And, and we know that, and, you know, like, again, we all have used, you know, so many software, especially, you know, if you think of Excel, right? You only use 10% of the features. And 90% of the features kind of bring so much of noise and confusions in all those tools that are out there, even the practice management softwares that are out there. So when we focused on building Smile Genius, we were focusing on what are the most essential elements? What are the minimum steps that the dentist has to do to get the job done? So again, it's about change, yes, but the benefits that it's bringing. And there's not a lot of unlearning or relearning into a new system. And as I was saying, I, I use a very kind of weird example about Facebook, but you know, if you can use those simple tools, uh, you can use a Smile Genius as well. But you know, we provide consultations at the beginning if, the, if you're a new business that's launching or if you're a new dentist who's, who wants to start Clear Align as in their practice, uh, it's an easy kind of learning for them. We are always there to handhold. Uh, but then if you're already, uh, you know, selling Clear Aligners or if you already have uh, a system out there, then we help uh, and we work with you to migrate from existing portal to, to Smile Genius. But it's more, uh, you know, in consultation with you. It's not that, hey, here's the tool, just go on and, you know, send us a check and we don't want to see you again. It's not like that. It's very engaging. It's very uh, kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of to and fro that, that we do. And we are always there to support our, you know, providers in terms of uh, any help that they might need. But yeah, they, they, there's still, you know, that change thing that you need to accept to have a change for the better and for the betterment of your patients, if not just your practice. What would you say are the main one or two pain points that a practice or doctor is facing now that you will 
alleviate. Yeah, that's about genius there. So what what's going to be their aha moment to say, wow, I need a solution like this for my practice because what you don't, if you don't know, you don't know. So how do they even know what to uncover? So what one, one or two things should they think about if they're listening to this and they're saying, wow, yeah, that check, check, I got to call these guys. So what are the two things, you know, that, that you, that questions that, or problems they're going to, they're facing that you have the answer for? Yeah. So I'll, I'll answer that. Uh, so you asked for two, for the practices. I'll ask, you know, answer that in, in two ways, right? So one is from the practice side of things and one is from the manufacturer side of things or the aligner system providers uh, side of things, right? So I think one thing from the from the practice side of things is, you know, they're currently using six to eight different platforms. Talk to any dentist, right? Talk to any business or practice owner. Ask them how many tools and systems they're using currently to treat a single patient in orthodontics or in a line of system. And you will get, you know, a, a range of five to 10. And, uh, you know, ask them how much time in a week they're spending on reconciliation of all the information. And at the end of the day, they're still pulling everything into an Excel and running the data and still not knowing, you know, what's happening. So that lack of information and that lack of simplicity uh, is what most of the people are frustrated with when it comes to aligners. So everyone is selling aligners as there are a lot of courses that, you know, happens in the aligner side of things. There's so much of marketing, but when it comes to the execution side of things, it's very frustrating because, you know, everything is spread over the place. And, you know, the dentists, they are not following technology they, they like that much as compared to, you know, other people. They don't know what tools are out there. They just, you know, they're just, you know, say if someone knocks their door, they might say yes. And then it's very difficult for them to switch over to a better tool. So I think providing that right information that simplifies their life, uh, you know, and, and allows them to reduce that admin overhead that's killing their business. Like if you, if you look at it, a lot of people are stressed out, like dentists are so much stressed out in like I'm here in Ireland and we hear so much about the NHS in UK that, you know, everyone is leaving the profession of dentistry because they're so stressed. And one of the reasons for being stressed is the admin overhead, you know, so much of work, reconciliation of the data. It's not about seeing the patients. It's about taking notes. It's about all the things in, you know, behind the scenes that happen. And there was a report that I was reading and I think there was 30 to 40% of your work week is spent on admin tasks from a from a clinician side of things. So just imagine the amount of overheads that are out there. So it removes those overheads. I wouldn't say that we reduce it to zero percent, but you know we reduce it to a couple of hours in a in a in a week versus you know two to three days of your time going into all these admin tasks. That's number one. Number two, when it comes to the labs or the manufacturing side of things, right? Uh, typically, any aligner business that's launching their aligner business uh, or a manufacturer. Uh, they are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars in building their own case management systems, in building their own remote monitoring apps. So everyone is everyone wants a remote monitoring app, uh, and you know they they wanted to customize in their way, have their own branding, have their own workflows out there. And you know most of the time they don't have IT department. It's not their their job is manufacturing operations and marketing. Their main job is not technology. So we provide them with a plug and play solution, which could be customized for their branding so that they can launch their aligner brand the very next day rather than, you know, spending eight months with a tech, you know, kind of a few freelancers here and there whom they may not see the next day. So again, it brings that stability and, you know, growth side of things for the labs, saving them hundreds of thousands of dollars. But to the practices, it brings that efficiency and growth and better patient experience at the end of the day, which brings repeat business back to them. Yeah, it's important for you know dental practice to understand what's out there and to look at your bottom line. You know, it, it, you know, more and more and more GPs across the, the world are now embracing orthodontics, are now offering aligners, and it's a smart move. You know, um, you want to adapt and be to, and at the end of the day, you want people to have the smile they want and get the perfect, you know, and to be happy. And, you know, to be offering aligners for every, every orthodontist that should be offering this across the board in the, in the practice. If you don't, um, shame on you because you, people are needed. You know, there, there's, you know, everybody, it's almost impossible to not have perfect, to have not a perfect teeth. So you have to have, you get some sort of orthodontic treatment sometime throughout your life. So it's real important to have this in your, in your practice, or at least keep it in your, in your view, you know, and if you're not ready now, Sooner or later, you should because if you don't, your your competition will, you know. And it's from 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 a lab to a manufacturer to to a doctor itself, you have to adapt. You have to have you know the newest shiniest toys. And if you don't, somebody else will. So it's real important to to, to work with you know company like about genius on this because if you're not doing it, as I said, your competition will. Um, <coughs> so I got I got 
three more questions for you. Number one is, um, so I'm going to give you a gift and you're, you're going to be able to put on a pair of glasses that's going to bring you back in time five years. What one bit of advice are you going to, can you tell yourself five years ago that will change your life? <laughs> that's a good question. I haven't thought of that question in a long time now, right? You always do forward-looking things. Uh, but but I think that um, believing in the process and having faith. So I think one of the things that, you know, like five years ago, I was very much, you know, uh, you, you want think uh, you you want to get things done quickly rather than waiting for, you know, you kind of overestimate. There's a saying that you overestimate what you can do in a year and you underestimate what you can do in a decade, right? And I think that's what I've learned now more and more so. So I think it's just believe, having faith in the process, uh, in your goals, in the milestones and and not overestimating what I can do in a year, but kind of spreading it out over the course of four to five years. I think that would be my advice uh, to my younger self, five years younger self. <laughs> All right, so now you're going to put those glasses down and put another, another pair on, and now you're going forward three years. Where do you see the orthodontic industry in three years from now? Yeah, okay. So I'm, I'm not an expert, I would say, <laughs> on, on that, but you know, how I see in often talking to so many dentists and orthodontic you know practices globally, uh, I, I see that there's a change happening. People are more flexible. There is less monopoly uh, in terms of one or two brands just you know taking over the market. So there's coexistence of multiple brands suiting different geographies, uh, you know, rather than just one or two brands just taking over. And I think there is there is also a lot of respect for. Uh, you know, other kind of systems that are out there as well. So it's kind of coexistence uh, and then lack of monopoly in orthodontics. And I think there's a lot of um, awareness as well. So I know that there is some stats that I think everyone would have seen it that, you know, only 1% of current uh, eligible population has access to clear aligners, right? Or orthodontic treatment. There's still 99% of eligible population that is left who can still access. So I see things moving, uh, you know, orthodontic, prices for aligners especially going down and they kind of aligning with your traditional braces pricing. That's quite a lot that's happening in Middle East. I see that falling over into Europe as well. So I think the prices would reduce. It would be more affordable rather than three to four thousand euro uh your dollar, you know, aligner treatment. It would be like thousand to fifteen hundred to two thousand. So that price competitiveness would be there because there would be more players offering, right? That's another going back to the reason. And I think pe people wouldn't see uh, orthodontic, you know, kind of uh, treatments as a luxury, okay? And I think there would be more education uh, in the developing side, emerging markets. Uh, I think it's it's there on developed side of things, but in the developing markets, I think it would be taken as a more of a hygiene approach rather than uh, a luxury that only few people can afford. Again, it goes back to that pricing being reduced and making it more affordable for everyone. You know, the fact that you know, certain you know, certain monopolies up have been broken up over the last several months has opened up a huge amount of opportunities for other aligner companies. And I'm very happy to see that. It's, you know, I've had many of those companies on my podcast previously, and it's great to be able to have disruptors and new and game changers out there. Somebody wants the same thing over and over again. So, you know, I'm very you know excited about that, you know, you know for you as well. Um, other question is, um, so now you're going to be on a desert island for a year, what one movie and what one food will you take with you? <laughs> okay, okay. So food, food. Okay, yeah. So I think I, I'm a big, you know, fan of um, fruits and bananas. So I, I think I'll, I'll take a bunch of I don't know how many how many days you are leaving me there, but one year, <laughs> one year. Okay. I hope I have a, c a constant supply of bananas <laughs> there, right? That's my that's my okay. favorite fruit. Uh, at least okay. I'm happy to have it any meal, like any meal. Okay. Um, favorite movie, favorite movie. I would say that Rocky Balboa, uh, you know, had been the 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 movie that changed my perspective uh, on the world. Right. And I'm a big fan of uh, Sylvester Stallone, and and I think that that's that's a movie that I'll always keep by my side Sorry, and rewatch it all the yeah. time. Yeah, Rocky, Rocky, Rocky and is, all series, yeah, in general. Yeah, Ro Rocky, Rocky one is my is my favorite movie of all time as well. But, yeah. and it's funny timing. Unfortunately, if you saw it in the news, but yesterday, um, Paulie from Rocky died. You know, um, oh, he, and if you saw that, uh, which is a shame. Eighty three years old, Burt Young. Um, so he was, you know, Rocky's wife's brother in the movie 
um, you know, just died yesterday. And if you get a chance, you know, we'll look all we'll over the internet was different memes from him. And he had some great, great, great quotes there. So um, great, great choice for a movie there. <laughs> um, so my, my hat's off to you for that. Um, so, you know, if anybody's interested in learning more about Biogenius, you'll be able to see a link on the on the notes here to you know to it as well. Um, but if somebody wants to reach out to you and get more information, what's the best way for them to contact you? Yeah, so I think you'll put that on the show notes anyways. So again, uh, you, they can reach out to our website, which is smilegeniusdental.com or find me on LinkedIn. So again, it's Nippon Katuria. Uh, you can find me. There is only one Nippon Katuria out there, so you'll <laughs> find it in dentistry. Um, but yeah, uh, hit me on LinkedIn. My email is nippon at smilegeniusdental.com. So it's N-I-P-U-N, nippon at the name of the company, smilegeniusdental.com. So yeah, I think those are the best channels to reach out to me on. And uh, yeah, it would be great to know where you are and how we can help you in your next journey with the Linus. I appreciate it. So, Ben, thanks so much for joining. I really appreciate it. Um, guys, it's a great company. Um, you know, I love what they're doing. I love they're opening up opportunities for, for, for dentists all over the world. And, um, you know, take a look, take a look, take a look at what they do. Um, you'll be seeing a lot more by coming up across down the road, working with us at Wealth of Marketing. Um, you know, we've got some great programs and, and partnership opportunities coming up down the road here. So you'll be seeing a lot more of him on, on our social as well. So thanks so much for joining. I really appreciate it. Um, everybody out there in podcast land, thank you so much for listening. Once again, we always love to hear your feedback and comments. So please let us know of some more, you know, opportunities, what you're looking to hear from. Let us know, you know, your thoughts. And we'd love to hear your comments on the on the show. So thank you very much for watching and listening. And um, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. We'll see. And everybody out there, podcast land, be safe, be happy, keep smiling. Be, be well. Bye-bye. Orthomarketing.com. 360-degree digital marketing solutions for your practice.